With Bard's constant updates, there have been some major changes to how you actually use this AI. So I wanted to make a tutorial that teaches you every new thing that you can do with Bard and a lot of the things that you didn't know that you could do with Bard. So let's not waste any time. Let's jump right in. Now, before we do dive into all the tutorials, if you do want to make sure that you get the full experience and capabilities of Bard, you're going to want to click this right here, which is essentially the extensions tab. Once you click this extensions tab, you can see here that they've got a bunch of different things that you can toggle on, including Google Fights, Google Hotels, Google Maps, YouTube, and of course, Google Workspace. Just make sure you do this so that further on in the tutorial, when you see certain things being done, you aren't wondering why Bard can't do them. Just make sure you click this extensions. And now, of course, these are all toggled on. One of the newest things that you can do with updated Bard is actually check what's going on inside a video. So what you need to do, first of all, is of course, first, just go into YouTube and then find a link for any video. Now, you just wanna make sure that you copy and paste that video link in just like that. Then you just wanna say, what is this video talking about. So now if you do want to use this for analyzing a video, you're going to want to use this template right here. This is the official Bard template that Google have given us. And essentially it starts by saying, give me insights about this video. Then that's where you put your video link. Then you follow it up by saying, organize the information in a set of easy to scan bullet points. Then you just click submit. Once you click submit, the internal engine uses Google to search YouTube, then of course finds the video, then essentially gets the transcript and then summarizes that really quickly. Now, of course, you do have to have a Google account for this because Bart is actually connected to all your stuff. But you can see right here, this is a video that we made, I think around one to two months ago, and it actually gives us some key information about the video. So it says the video talks about a recent research paper by Microsoft Research, explores the potential of AI systems to improve themselves without human intervention. And the key takeaways for the video are AI systems to evolve in ways that they're not anticipated by developer and yada, yada, yada. So you can see that this is a really neat feature from Google because what this actually allows us to do is if we find a video that may be an hour long and maybe we don't have the entire time to watch that video and summarize exactly what was going on, we can just simply ask Bard, hey, what is this video about? And what are some of the key takeaways from this video so that I can get the information from this video? So that is one of the newest features that Bard can do and I can guarantee you this is something that people do want to use. Then of course, something that's actually really cool that many people don't know about Bard that you can actually do is that you can actually hear the responses from Bard. So you know like how in the iPhone you do have Siri and when you talk to Siri you do have a response. With Bard what you can actually do is you can actually talk to Bard and have a conversation. So for example I can click use my microphone and then once I click this button I'm just going to click allow. Then I can say hello Bard how are you doing today? Then of course I'm going to go ahead and click enter into that and it's going to give me a decent response. But what's also cool about that is that I can also listen back to this response so let's say for example i want to hear what's being said i click the listen button whatever you need today how can i help you hi there i'm doing well thank you for asking i am ready to help you with whatever you need today how can I help you? Now, of course, this doesn't sound that great if we're truly being honest, but it still is a feature that you can use for maybe a hands-off experience. If you do want it to be a little bit more hands-off, you can use this feature because this was a feature that wasn't initially there. So the next thing that we do have that you can actually do is, of course, we did talk about how you do have extensions in the Google Workspace. And of course, one thing that you can do is you can essentially chat with your emails. So if you're someone who doesn't really stay on top of your emails, you can use certain prompts, which all will be linked in the description below to essentially use Google Bard to essentially view those emails. So I typed in what emails from Uber did I have this month? And this is gonna be how you're going to want to format these emails because sometimes for some reason, Google Bard doesn't realize that it does have these capabilities. So here you can see I asked Bard what emails from Uber did I have this month? And you can see that it actually gave me 16 emails. Now I'm not gonna show you guys these emails cause I don't know how personal information works. and I wouldn't want any of my personal information being out there on the internet, but you can try this yourself. And then what you can also do is to ask Bard to summarize these emails. Maybe you're someone that works within a certain industry. Maybe perhaps you've missed an email and you wanted to know if you got that email you can simply ask Bard to say look did I get any emails from X this month did I get any emails from Y this month and then Bard should do that if Bard doesn't give you a quick response and says I don't have access to your emails just ask it in a way where it seems like Bard understands that it would have this so you can see right here I just put what emails did I have from Uber this month I didn't add 
too much information, which may have confused Bard, which is what I've seen happen in other certain queries. Next, we have another thing that you can do with Bard, and that is analyze the contents of a web page. So what you want to do is simply type into Bard, what is this article about? Then you simply want to paste that in. And you can see right here that I'm typing in, what is this article about? I simply hit enter into Bard and Bard's going to give me a response and it's somehow going to read that web page and then summarize that data. So you can see right here, it says, this is an article about OpenAI's investment in Rain, a startup developing AI chips. It discusses Altman's personal investment in Rain and OpenAI's letter of intent to buy $51 million of its chips. The Rain chips are designed to be more powerful, energy efficient, and energy efficient than current chips. And you can see right here, it then shows me the website that is reviewed. So of course, this is something that is really simple, but of course I could just do this even further. I could then do, what is this article about? Summarized with key bullet points. Then I could click that in like that. And as you guys can see right here, it is going to give me a response based on what I put in. And of course you could do this because this does actually help you understand the information in a much easier way. Just ask it for bullet points and it's going to give you that data really quickly. One thing that I do find is that Bard is actually quite quicker than ChatGPT when it does come to these things. If you are someone who is indeed in need of speed, then Bard is definitely going to be a great choice for analyzing web pages and getting data. Then of course, we have another feature from Bard that is actually really, really cool. So Bard is actually a multimodal AI, meaning that you can input various different things into it. One of the things that you can input into Bard is of course images. Now, it isn't as advanced as Code Interpreter, but it still is really cool. Here, I'm going to put in an image into Bard, and then I'm going to put what is the data about. Then essentially, what Bard is now going to do, it's now going to use its multimodal AI to scan the image, then extract the data, then summarize the data, and analyze the data and present it to me. You can see right here, it says, based on the information you provided, the image shows a graph depicting the growth of the world's population over a period from 1950 to 2100. And that is, of course, actually true on the image that you can see. Then it says, the graph indicates that the world's population has been growing steadily, reaching 8 billion in 2022, which if we go to 2022, you can see that it does say 8 billion. And of course, it can say and projected to increasing to around 9 billion by 2058. The graph further suggests that the growth rate is expected to slow down after 2058. And you can see that after 2058, the graph does in fact slow down. So Bard is one of those AIs that can extract data from certain images if you need it to. Then of course, I'm going to give you guys another example. This is another graph. You can see the most populous nations on earth right here. Then it says the image you sent me shows the population of the most populated countries on earth in 2003 and 2023. And that is really, really clear. It shows that India is the most populated country in the world. And of course, it talks about China. Now, of course, if you are someone that gets confused by this, you can just input images of various data sets that you do have as screenshots. And then, of course, you can just say, give me the bullet points from this. But of course, as always, you do want to make sure that with any one of these responses, you always do double check them because time and time again, I have heard that sometimes people do. As always, a neat feature in Bard that isn't really included in any other multimodal large language model is that they do have three different information sets. You can see right here, one of the things that Google is able to do is export this in many different ways. You can see that these other responses, some of them are quite long. That is the reason for the other drafts. Other large language models don't actually do this. And I'm not sure how Google manages to afford to do this since I do know that the compute needed to be able to do this is already putting a strain on many different companies' resources. So if you don't get what you want from draft one, one thing you can do with Bard, and this is with any response, not just with advanced data analysis, you wanna make sure that you look at the other drafts because they also do look really good. You can see that this one actually manages to get the data from this and then it manages to get that out. Out. Something that I did find that was really cool was that once I put this image in, it was actually managing to get the actual true value of the number that wasn't even in the image. So you can see right here, for example, if we take USA, we can see that the 2003 number is just under 300 and the 2023 number is just over 300. Then you can see that United States, of course, it's just over 300 and just below 300. Now we don't know if these are the official values from the document, but I'm guessing that it's probably done an estimate, which is really really cool. Another thing that I do want to showcase from Bard, and I might as well showcase it from this example, is that you can export data to Sheets. So if you just click this button here, 
after asking VAR to generate any kind of table and you click export to sheets. It essentially creates a spreadsheet. And then essentially once you've done that, you can click open in sheets. And then of course, what we can see here is that in this document, which we can then export to Excel or whatever other platform that we need, you can see we have the exact data that we need right here. So this is something that you can really use and something that you can really do with any sort of image and data extraction. So something that is also really cool is that BARD actually does have certain key pieces of information on certain images. Everyone knows that Google Images is where you go to look around at certain different things. But if you do manage to find or take a picture of something and BARD instantly recognizes it, this is a key feature that you can have. You can see here I've input this image of this strange looking plant. Essentially what I did was I went online on an article and I tried to find some of the rarest plants I could. That was because I wanted to test Bard's capabilities if it would be able to identify a rare plant. And you can see that here it said based on the information you provided, I believe that you are looking at a spiral plant in a pot. It's not exactly clear to tell the exact exactly type of plant but it could be one of these following and then it does say that this image can be found on this web pages with these titles so essentially what you can do with bard here is you can do some type of reverse image search which is actually really really cool and also with the other drafts you can also see that it does get the information right it does say that the plant is nat native to the african continent and is known for its unusual spiral shape which is actually true and then of course it does actually tell me which article these images are from so this is something that is really cool with the bard it gives you a decent amount of information on rare different things that you may not have known and also in some cases it can give you location data on those images now another thing that you can do with bard that most people actually didn't know including myself was that you can actually modify your responses you can see here that if you go up to you know look at your view of the drafts and you see this button right here you can see that there's this button called modify response you can see that you can modify modify a response to make it shorter, modify the response to make it longer, change the response to make it simpler, also change the response to make it more casual, or make it more professional. So there's many different things that you can do with your responses if you want to customize how they are. It's quite similar to ChatGPT's Bing feature where you can get creative, more professional, or more balanced. In addition, another feature that you also didn't know about this, imagine you found something really cool in a conversation with Bard and you wanted to share that. What you can actually do is you can click the share and export button. Now, of course you can draft it to Gmail, export it to documents, but that's not what we're talking about. If you wanna share the confirmation, click the share button and you can see here, you can create a public link to share. So you can share the entire chat or you can just share the prompt and the response. So you can see the headline and you can change the headline. And then of course you can click create public link. This is really cool because if you found something and you wanna share it with a friend, all you need to do is literally click that button and then create this public link and you can share that piece of data with a friend. Now, one of the another things that you can do where Bard's real-time data analysis makes real good use is by being able to go ahead and do this. You can see that right here, you can essentially find hotels in certain areas and what you can do is you can pretty much get real-time data on the best hotels to buy if you are managing to plan a holiday. It's got an integration with Google Hotels. And of course you can see right now, it's pulling up the data from 6th to the 7th of December for two adults. Of course I can change this. It's giving me a link to all the different hotels, all the different stuff. And you have to remember, this is going to be really good data because of course this is integrated directly with Google. I can go ahead and I can click these links and I can go ahead and see exactly what is going on here. And of course I can ask it, you know, can you do it in this price range? Can you do it in that price range? This is definitely something that is really cool. In addition with Bard, there are two other key small but unique features that you can use. Up here, you can see that you can change on the settings. You can use the dark theme, which is actually really cool because I didn't know about this until I decided to make this video, but this just makes it look so much cooler. And in addition, you can change to respond once complete or respond in real time. So essentially respond once complete. So let's say for example, I just put in something random like product description. Essentially, if I put this in, it's just going to wait and then it's going to paste the entire text if it's respond when complete. So you're gonna see that takes time and boom, that the text is. But if I go to settings and I do respond in real time, if I do regenerate draft, you're going to see that as the message is being generated, it manages to write it out like that. I think responding in real time is much better because it just seems a little bit more natural. Now, if there are any secrets that I did miss in this video, be sure to comment them down below and be sure to have a great discussion about what Bard is good for and what Bard isn't good for. Hopefully we're gonna see some updates to Bard in the near future as it should be powered by Google's new software called Gemini. But for now, that is it on the core things that Bard can do.